Hey guys, it's me, Wilson, and we're back for another video on F1 22, and we're here for PSGL round four, I believe it is, at Miami. First time I'm doing a league race at Miami, first time a lot of people are probably probably league racing at um, Miami, but um, yeah, good to be back, good to be back racing it in PSGL uh, last time out at Austria, if you haven't seen already, did not go um, to planned whatsoever, um, I won't spoil it too much um if you care enough um you've probably seen already but it yeah it just was not an ideal race at all um overall i just lack pace at austria i've always lacked pace since 2020 and um, i don't know why it's just it's just one of those things and um i also lacked confidence which um was a major part and then yeah my race craft during the race just wasn't good enough i did not drive well enough i think we still could have got um points during that race if we just drove a little bit smarter in the race but um yeah we live and we learn i made the mistake most of it was literally all my fault there's a tiny bit of um bad luck in there but i can't really blame anyone else but nevertheless that um race has left a fire burning in my belly and going into this race i was determined to get a good result i can't explain how frustrated i was with austria and um, it left us 13th in the standings which I don't think is very representative, considering, um, for example, we were on for a P4 at Bahrain, we got taken out, and then what was round two? I can't even remember what round two was, but um, yeah, I feel like we have been extremely unlucky this season. Things just haven't gone our way. We could easily be P5, P6 in the stands right now. Um, but yeah, that's racing, that's life, these things happen. Um, so yeah, as I said, this has left uh, a fire burning in my belly to do well and. Hopefully we can get our season off to some sort of a start now, try and carry some momentum. But nevertheless, enough of me rambling on. We're here now at Miami. This is our turn, our, our chance even, to um, prove that we can race at the top, we can fight at the top, and uh, we don't need luck to fight at the top, like Bahrain showed. So nevertheless, we're starting our final Q1 lap. We do have to go again, sadly. Quite a few people have to go again. Miami is just one of those tracks but nevertheless coming to the end of uh, sector two nearly just halfway through it go through this twisty section i actually don't mind this section but um when you're trying to push the limit of the car it's not fun especially under a high pressure environment like this and then we nail this to an extent it wasn't awful but it wasn't um great a point four split could be better um this lap if we do complete it should see us safely through to q2 uh, this final corner is off camber. It's pretty difficult to nail your braking zone. If you go too early, um, you lose a lot of time. And if you go too late, you lose a lot of time. There's uh, You've got to be very precise with it. But we come up to the line and it is P3. Move on to Q2 then. And um, we did get through, obviously, with that lap. And uh, coming around the final corner, I believe this is on an old set. I could be wrong. I believe this is on a worn set of tyres as we use two sets in Q1. But we come up to the line. And yes, it is a 27.3. I actually remember these tyres were about 20%. But now we fire straight to our, our mid-session run of Q2. This is on a new set of tyres. And uh, last corner, pretty well. Last corner is going pretty well all session so far. But we come up to line, we're 9 tenths up, which isn't a massive improvement at all. And it's a point through. You might have heard me slightly say the chicane is not great. Um, maybe in a little different language, but um, yeah, we ignore that. But that does mean we have to go out again. We're P5, just ahead of Yarno, Josh, and behind Alvaro and Job. And um, yeah, I have a feeling that high point three is just not going to be enough, which is a shame. It was a very scruffy lap. We could easily have done a point two, I feel. But um, we're going to ride on board for this Q2 lap. Going into turn one, you want to break just at the 100 meter board. Use a decent amount of that inside curb to drag you in. Use this left hand curb. I miss this right hand side curb. Some people use it. I feel like it just does not. Um, entice me. We're 200s down though going through the first sector. We missed this apex and we put way too much front load onto the car and we're just losing time. It's an endless time loss here. You cannot extend in PSGL through this corner as we do not and riding that curb on next at half a tenth down it's a low to mid 0.8 first sector which I can confirm is not a good first sector whatsoever. We ideally want to be in the 0.6s or at least low 0.7s. Going into this next heavy braking zone. We actually hit the wall on entry. Missing our apex. Locking up. We're trying to push a little bit too hard. This is where I realise we're going to have to crawl some time back. We have some time 
in the chicane from the previous lap. Can we get it right? We get that pretty well. Are we going to go green the delta? It has slide down. We missed that apex a little bit, but we have set up the exit. It's a 405 split. And as you can see, through that section, we've gained over a tenth. And that just shows we could have easily done a point two. But shoulda, woulda, coulda, it is what it is. Coming into the last corner now, we have to hook this up. Slamming onto the brakes into the final corner. Third gear up to fourth gear. Opening the wheel as early as we can to nail that traction. We're four hundreds up, which might just be the crucial lap time we need to get through. That pops us up into P3, the 26 mid point three. And as you can see, we do just get through. You can't see because my camera angle... Um, but the cutoff time was pretty close. I think I was 300 off P11. So, uh, yeah, um, pretty happy with that. We can't really complain. And uh, that sets us into Q3. That's three out of four times we've got to Q3 in PS Shell. Last week in Austria, we didn't. But um, I had a feeling I was expecting that. But, yeah, we skipped our first lap, which was a 26.8, I believe on worn tires but this is on a new set this is our final run in q3 this is the run that matters all week we have been building up to this run this is the important one so we're going to go on board for the whole lap going into turn one we want to break just at the 100 meter board slamming down to fourth gear i think i actually went down to third momentarily there maybe and then going up to sixth opening the wheel trying not to scrub the tires but then bringing it back tightly as quickly as you can we're a tenth up on the delta this corner is all about trying not to scrub the front tires we do it a little bit poorly we're not really getting that line here we're way too wide on entry and it's just not helped us at all we do get a good exit out of this corner so it's came back a little bit into our hands two and a half tenths up it's only a mid point seven first sector as you can see compared to lucas's point five we're one tenth down nearly two tenths and it's not looking great already we've already lost a massive chunk of time going into this next left left hander though slamming on the brakes just at the bridge hitting that curb nicely through here in fourth gear dabbing the brakes back up to fifth to minimize wheel spin now at this tricky chicane you want to cut as much as you can we don't take a lot of apex speed but it's done pretty nicely this is done well as well now planting the throttle onto this big straight this is probably one of the longest straights on the track and now opening DRS any moment now we have opened it four tenths up on a point eight it's not looking ideal we're gonna need a pretty good last sector aka last corner for a good position in the starting for the race third gear up to fourth gear slamming on the throttle can we get a good run up to line half a second up nearly six tenths up on the delta and we provisionally put it at p3 and um yeah p2 uh point two is not um a lap i'm really happy with but um yeah is what it is we're p8 it could have been worse it could have been p10 or we could have not been to q2 or q3 at all um but looking at the times there yeah definitely feel like we could have got p5 uh, i feel like doing a lap josh or friday done um i don't think i would have been able to do that um i did lack a tiny bit of pace in the first at this track and that kind of uh harmed me um but yeah maybe if i completely hooked up yeah p3 was in the cards but yeah i think realistically we could have got p5 um and a realistic expectation but as i said earlier earlier shoulda coulda woulda um a lot of people could say the same thing but p8 not a bad starting position we just need to work on our starts our starts on the hard tire have been pretty poor recently so um this race i was just hoping to you know really try and get a good start i feel like i kind of panic a little bit too much in the starts and when you panic on a hard set of tires which do not grip up it's not ideal but nevertheless we're rolling up to our grid i'm sure you all know it now we do manual starts which is such a good feature in um the new f1 game but rolling up to the grid we've got sebastian job ahead of us Fabrizio Donoso in p6 alvaro Car caraton p9 and yoni tormula p10 but rolling up to our grid spot can we nail it we dab the throttle just a little bit then. I, I thought I was going to jump it there. But 0 0.4 off the marker. That's pretty good. Close enough. Um, at least we didn't get disqualified. But now we're just waiting for the final car to line up at the back of the grid before five red lights. So we've got one red light, two red lights, three red lights, four red lights, five red lights. And away we go. Do we get a good start? Our reaction time was so poor. I was distracted on other things. 
where if wheel spin phase it was actually pretty good though we're gonna have to break as late as we can without having to hit any cars just making sure we keep our front wing clean and alvaro carton he has got an amazing run on his run on us we're stuck on that curb that is not handy at all opening or turning on the rs now yoni tormula is around inside amazing straight line speed from the alpha tari we shut that door off close it as quick as we could as i knew if he got ahead of me that would be game over now we've got Brendan Lee behind us. We need to watch her inside. And uh, we've got a card sending it there and inside. I believe that was Thomas Runhar. Now going into a straight. There's a massive crash. Don't know what's happened there, but that has gave us a very tidy gap to Brendan Lee. Over a second already. I can't imagine we're going to be able to hold that gap. But Brendan Lee, he must have damage. That looked like a pretty big hit. Marcel Kiefer pops himself up into P11. And I believe there are about four wide behind us. Going into this next left hand. You can see all the proximity arrows down our inside. Tom McPraz, does he started P19 or P last, I believe, and he's P11 in half a lap. Amazing start from Tom McPraz, does. and now, um, yeah, we're just having to calm down. Brendan Lee still over just a second, but I believe he will catch pretty quickly, as um, we're a lot more congested than he is. He's got a lot more clean air, but I believe he did get damaged as we move on to lap 7, and he is in the DRS, but he is floating about that one second gap, as are we. Alvaro Caraton. The pace was very quick this race. And um, yeah, Brendan Lee, I heard he got side pod damage. I don't know how true that is. It could have been front wing damage for um, who knows. But um, yeah, I heard he got some sort of damage, which I do believe he wasn't um, very quick this race. And um, yeah, it would not surprise me at all. But going on to halfway through lap seven now, is that say is that nine tenths? No, that's eight tenths. Sorry, my screen is uh, very small. But yeah, eight tenths is the gap to Brendan and um, we're just trying to relax, trying to save ERS, but in this train, it's so quick that it's such a struggle to save ERS, as if you look in your top left, it momentarily went to second there, and it is fluttering around the 9th, 10th mark. This is a part of the track where you can gain a lot of time if you nail it through this next left-hander. And Let's see what the gap's going to be going on to this straight. Is it going to be over a second? And indeed it is. That is huge for this race, because now we have the ERS, and Brendan Lee does not. This means he's going to lose three, four, maybe even half a second on the straight, and it looks like we're right about three to four tenths on the straight as Tomic passes him by the looks of it, um, trying to get that, you know, boost onto, um, to try and slingshot to catch up to us. But we move on to lap 12, and Tomic could not do it, and the gap extended to three seconds as Marcel Kiefer ended up taking over that P10 position. And um, lap 12, I was thinking at the moment to pit, I think my plan was 15 or 16 and um, I thought that was fairly early but lap 13 we already saw a car in the name of Brendan Lee pit and um, that kind of triggered a lot to happen lap 13 now um, moving on to 14 fab actually boxes and um, I feel maybe I should have pit this lap because it would have helped the undercut but we'll see where we come out and um, once I saw fab pit and Marcel pit obviously that was the cube 14 that was the pit lap which is a uh, a lot earlier than I thought it would be. I thought we'd be pitting 15 earliest. But um, yeah, 14 it is. You've uh, sometimes got to change your race plan during the race. And that's what we're going to have to do. Hards didn't feel too bad. It's just the mediums are so much better. So that's kind of what we're dealing with at the moment. Um, still in the DRS of Alvaro Caraton. Um, only two cars or one car in front of us actually pit. But we pit a few front runners there. I think that's Josh and Yarno pit with us, making sure we don't speed, and um, we're going to set a set of these medium tyres on, as I throw my words perfectly, can we get an optimal pit stop, 0 0.4, and we do, putting on the medium tyres, and if you don't know, you can't see my M MFD, but these tyres are 70 degrees when you come out of the pits, so people like Fab, his tyres are already be heated up, same with Marcel, and um, these tires are very cold. You might be able to just see visually that I, um, yeah, they're just not nice to drive. But the crucial thing is, is we're actually out of the RS of, Al of Alvaro Caraton, and um, that is a very bad thing. That is not a good thing at all. It might be exciting for the viewers, but for us, this is not good at all because if we lose the RS, our race could plummet down the drain. And um, yeah, we need the RS. Without the RS, it's pretty difficult to do anything. So, um. I kind of panicked a little bit there, I'm not going to lie. We move on to the end of lap 15, and we're just fluttering about the DRS. Nine tenths it is. I can't remember if we get DRS here. I don't think we do. I think we just miss it. Um, but my panicking stage did end as we came out 
of turn one. It did go down to nine tenths, and I realised Sebastian Job on cold tyres is ahead, so we're easily going to be in the DRS. And you know, I kind of relaxed, but before that, I kind of forgot Sebastian was going to come out in front of them. And um, yeah, that made me uh, relax a lot as he defends very aggressively. As we have a massive twitch yeah, yeah. going through I'm, that left hander, and then um, I had a feeling we could maybe have a go at him, but um, you can't see my URS here. We had nothing, like nothing, and. Um, I believe that Alpha Towers and Red Bulls were running very low wings, as you can see. That they're rapid on a straight line as they both go side by side into this corner. And Alvaro Cardon overshoots it. And this is where I see my chance, my opportunity. And we snatch up that P9 position. And um, net P8, I believe. And uh, yeah, moving on to lap 21 a few laps later. And it was pretty stalemate. As you can see, Sebastian Job nine tenths ahead. These uh, This train was very difficult to keep up with. Uh, Marcel Kiefer still just out of the DRS. He's actually pretty quick as we are in a DRS train considering how close he is. Um, but yeah, not much really happening right now. Just sitting in a DRS train. It was actually a very quick DRS train. Um, having to push quite a lot to keep up with these guys. But um, yeah, probably the first time I've pushed this, diff uh, this hard in a DRS train. But yeah, it's just so difficult to get it close to the job. Especially the dirt air in this game is pretty bad considering <laughs> it should be better. Um, with the new regs, but is uh, not the easiest. As we move on to lap 23, you can see Josh Adewu has a three second time penalty. So as long as we stay within three seconds, we will be taking that position off him. But going into this chicane, we are just behind um, Sebastian Job. The gap to Alvaro as well is very close to one second. So a lot of people fluttering on the eight, seven, nine, tenth mark. Nobody's really that close. I don't know what it was like at the front. Um, I know Lucas and Barry were 1 and 2, um, and they were obviously very close because whoever's behind second gets a massive toll. Um, but yeah, it's very difficult to get close at this track. As soon as you get below 8 tens, it's like, I, 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 you just, you've got no grip. That's the best way of explaining it. No turn in, no traction, just nothing. And uh, it's not ideal. But going through the chicane, as you can see, Sebastian Job actually got himself a 3 second time penalty. As well, so that moves us up two positions if we can stay within three seconds, um, which I hope we can. And uh, also, if I forgot to mention, Fabrizio Donoso, the Ferrari, uh, I believe he's in P4 at the moment. He has a five second penalty from last time out at Austria for a collision, which is uh, being carried over. So we're actually in a net P5 right now, and I didn't know that until my engineer, I think, told me in lap 25, 26. So uh, shout out to Yona Martins if you're watching this. Um, but yeah. It's looking pretty good, but we've just kind of got to bring it home now. It is the last lap. The second last corner of the track. We actually did break the RS to Alvaro Caraton, if you didn't already know it. So, um, pace was very quick um, in this top train, especially the top three. Um, they're on fire once again. Uh, it's looking like we're going to bring home P5 in Miami, if we can just hold it all together. They're going side by side by the looks of it up ahead. A lot of darting to the left, weaving. Um, try and defend or make a move but coming across the line coming out of the final corner should I say now coming across the line it's going to be P5 P6 after penalties but P5 after more post race penalties and um, yeah really happy with that to be honest um, I could never imagine myself saying I'm happy with a P5 finishing position as don't get me wrong in this calibre of drivers in this league it is a good position I mean this just pretty much esports. There's not one driver on this grid that's not affiliated to an esports team to an extent. They're all a really good academy driver and more. Um, so yeah, P5, very happy with that. I believe, um, sorry, I've got a lot of burps coming out. <laughs> I believe that puts us P10 in the PSGL standings, which don't get me wrong, I'm not satisfied with at all. But I feel like if we can build off of this, just carry a bit of momentum, um, It'll be very good because the last few rounds have just been pretty tough. I feel like obviously Bahrain, that was out of control. P4 would have been really good points. That's like eight points or something, which in the PSGL point system is very good. Um, yeah, we would have, if we got that, we would have been on about 18, eight, yeah, 18 points by now. And that's, I think, sixth, fifth in the championship. So, yeah, I mean, everyone's had their fair share of bad luck, I guess. But I feel like we've been a bit pretty hard with it. Um, and then obviously USA, that was really bad luck, we were just kind of a little bit messy, we got P7 there, and Austria, yeah, uh, we, we don't talk about Austria, um, but this Miami, P5, that's not bad at all, um, I'll take it to be honest, considering 
Uh, we started P8. We've gained three positions. So, um, yeah, pretty promising. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry if my commentary has been a bit, how do you say, like, sluggish. Um, I'm on very, very little sleep. And when I say little, I mean, like, two, three hours. Um, and I don't think it's helping me at all, especially with my Scottish accent. It does not make it easy to pronounce words. Um, so, yeah, very sorry if uh, it was a bit painful to watch in that sense. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.